Hello, this is Matt Sherwood with the Tech and Stuff channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about blending layers with Paint.net. Now the best way to describe blending layers is to take two separate layers, as you see here, and then run a filter or almost a special effect on them so that they produce kind of a, a unique result. Now let me, uh, I'm going to do two examples today so you can see where to start and what, what's going on. So first, so I'm going to go to the Layers menu and then choose import from file. Now I happen to have a folder on my desktop with my pictures ready and the ones I want to use are this one and this one. I'm holding the control button on the keyboard to select two random ones and uh, that puts them together. Now you can maybe guess I'm kinda going for a play on the Big Apple. Now the first thing you want to do is get these pictures so that they're they're the same size. And uh, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, I'm going to turn off the apple for the second. And I selected the picture behind it. And I want to see kind of the, how big it is. Choose the Move tool. And then resize this down. Now the reason I'm doing it like this, there are other ways to do this, but it's usually better to take a, a big picture and make it smaller than a small picture and make it bigger because you kind of uh, lose some of the picture quality on the small picture that you're making bigger. Okay, now we have these the same size. I'm going to take and select around the edge of this apple and I'm going to choose crop to the selection. It's going to cut off all the edges outside of that crop. Now the reason I chose these two pictures is because one, they're both JPEG files and the Apple picture has a nice clean white background that won't exactly interfere with the picture of New York. Now when you blend layers you're going to choose two layers and uh, this one I'm going to choose the Apple and in Paint.net you simply double click on it and it'll open up a layer properties window. Now there's couple things to note. First of all, you can always adjust the transparency on any layer in the layer properties. So if I just uh, turn the opacity down, you can see the apple kind of fades into the distance. Sometimes that's all you need in order to blend the layers together. Um, we're going to go a little beyond that today and look at some of the sort of blending modes. Now these blending modes, you'll find them in all sorts of photo programs. Uh, Photoshop, of course, being the most famous. And there are probably more options in Photoshop, but these are some very good ones. So first of all, if I take a multiply blending mode, you can see the effect it has. Again, adjusting the opacity will change the way that that affects it. But you can definitely get your Big Apple picture there and uh, give it the right kind of feel that you're looking for. Multiply, this is called the additive blending mode. And I, I do like the way that keeps a lot of the white background and yet everywhere that there's color, you'll see the pictures of New York show up. So that's kind of uh, interesting. The color burn, and mostly I'm just going to show you what they look like. You can always make adjustments with the opacity and it'll change some of it. Color dodge. The reflect. Moved that around there, so we were on the glow and um, the overlay difference, kind of like the nightmare on the Big Apple there. Negation, similar. Lighten, and so each of them introduces a level of transparency but sometimes it introduces it more in the background of the first picture and less in the middle. It just depends on which one you're doing. That's the darken mode, the screen mode, and the XOR mood mode. So kinda funky. Now if I were to uncheck this mode here and try this on the underlying picture with nothing underneath it, you'll see that it doesn't really do anything. So if I choose the, the modes, that's because we're blending layers and there isn't a layer underneath this to blend together. So just note that it only works on the top layer. Now my second example 
is with a, a different kind of photo mixed with a JPEG. So first I'm going to take this and I'm going to crop off the white edges. And on this project, the top picture is a PNG file. So you can, you'll notice it already has some transparency built into it. So there's nothing in the background of this picture that will interact while we're blending. Sometimes that's good. It's what you want. Other times not. So I'm going for a Big Apple sort of at night look. So I'm going to open up my layer properties and then go through the modes so you can see what they look like. So we have multiply, additive, and notice there are no sort of interactions going on except for on the apple because there was transparency around the apple. Color dodge, reflect, glow. Overlay, difference, negation, lighten, darken. Kind of like the darken for the night. Screen, and then the XOR kind of looks funky. Now there are, um, obviously you can see the artistic value in these blending modes. There are practical uses as well. I'm going to be making another video shortly on blending faces together. And the blending modes are very uh, key in order to make that work. And so thank you for your time today. Have fun blending layers together.